Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is going to be a video that's similar to the video that I did on the USW aggregation switch. I'm going to be setting up the USW24, the basic layer 2 uh, Unify switch. It's, it's really a simple switch, there's not much to it, but I am using it in my home network. And by the way, I did receive my CO today, so now things are going to start to roll and I got to get the rest of the network gear configured so I can get it ready for a physical install. So that's what this video, I figured I might as well do a video on it, right? Even though it's a basic switch. So we're going to take a look at that switch and then look at the specs on Ubiquiti site and then do a basic adoption and see if it needs an upgrade. Again, very similar to that USW aggregation video I did a few weeks ago. So let's switch over to the overhead now and take a look at what comes inside the box. So we have the switch itself. You can see there's not much to it on the top. There's no branding or anything, but inside the box you get the rack ears for mounting in a standard rack. You get the Unify quick start guide. Your mounting hardware for mounting in the rack and your universal AC power cord. That's pretty much all that came in the box. Now looking at the switch itself, measurements, its dimensions range from 17 and pretty much 17 and a half width, almost eight inches, it's 7.87 depth and just about an inch and three quarters in height. While I have it turned up like this, you can see it's got the 1.3 LCM touchscreen. Here are the 24 gigabit ethernet ports and the two gigabit SFP ports. You got some venting on the front. There's really nothing on the sides to show and nothing on the bottom either. I'll show you the bottom though, cause it's easy to show you that. And then on the rear of the switch, you have some more venting, the Unify brand here, and then the universal power port where you plug in the power cord. So that's pretty much just about it as far as the switch goes. Again, it's just a basic layer two switch. It's going to sit in the rack with the USW aggregation switch. And I have the 16 port, the original 16 port, uh, 150 PoE switch. That said, let's take a quick look at the specs on the UI website. So again, it's a layer two switch with 24 RJ45 one gig ports, two one gig SFP ports. I mentioned the 1.3 LCM color touchscreen. It has AR switch management. It is also fanless and silent cooling, just like the USW aggregation. It requires the Unify controller version of a minimum of at least 5.12.32 and later. The price point is $225, but it is currently sold out on UI's website. If we just take a look at a few more of the specs, here you can see the dimensions, and I had said 17 and a half. You can see it's 17.42 by 7.87 by 1.72. The weight without the mount, without mounting, is 5.95 pounds. And then the enclosure is made out of steel. It's got a total non-blocking throughput of 26 gigabits per second and a total switching capacity of 52 gigabits per second. Now, I know that this is not a high powered switch, but it's gonna serve its purpose in my rack. Like I said, it'll be accompanied and joined by the uh, USW 150 watt 16 port PoE switch, and that'll be giving my network all the PoE power that it needs. I have the US aggregation switch that'll give me the 10 gig capacity that I want. And then I have this switch here, which will just be there for all the other additional drops that I put in throughout the house. So that said, let me take a second to get it configured as far as getting the ethernet cable plugged in, getting the power cable plugged in, and then we'll jump over into the Unify controller and get it adopted. Okay, we're looking at the US W24. You can see it's powered up. The touch screen is on. I have the ethernet cable plugged into the first port here. Obviously the power cord is plugged in the back. And if you follow it over, like I showed you last time, it's plugged into the studio network switch. So that said, we're gonna just jump over to the Ubiquiti device discovery tool and get this puppy adopted. Okay, so I have the Ubiquiti device discovery tool, which is a Chrome extension and it works really, really well. As you can see here, the 
USW24 is showing up with the status of pending. There's the current IP address. There's the device type, the Mac address, the firmware. Again, the status is pending. In the background, you can see I have my Unify controller up. Now this is a cloud-based controller that I host on DigitalOcean. I know I mentioned that last time, but just for those of you who are watching me for the first time, just so you know, this is not a local controller. So in order to get it adopted to the cloud-hosted controller, I'm gonna to have to put in my inform URL information. So I'm going to do that now by clicking on the action button. And down here, I'm just going to complete this inform URL with my personal information. So we'll get that done and get this puppy adopted. Once that information is in, we're gonna go ahead and send this command. And eventually we should see the USW appear in the controller. And there it is. I don't know if you see it back here, but it just popped up in place. So let's click over to the controller now and you can see there's the USW24. Disregard the IP address. Again, like I said in the last video, it's taking the IP address via DHCP, which is the setup that I have here in the studio, but it's going to actually be a different IP address in my home. So for now, I'll leave it set to the DHCP address, but then I will give it a static address in the 192.168.25 network range. So what we're gonna do now is go ahead and we're gonna go click on the word adopt. And it says the status is adopting. And we'll give it a few minutes, but typically what you have to do is go back to the device discovery tool and issue the inform command a second time. So I'm just going to do that at this point in time. For some reason it's not letting me, it usually lets me. Let's go back and try that again and see what's up. Yeah, I should be able to. Seems like the Ubiquity device discovery tool has, is frozen on me. So what we may have to do is go into the switch via SSH. Oh, nope, there we go, it is provisioning. We could have gone into the switch via SSH and sent the command that way as well. But it looks like we're in luck. Okay, and now we have a status of connected here. And it has, let's see, it has an upgrade available. So we'll go ahead and we'll do the upgrade process. And then we'll come back and we'll just take a look at some of the specs on the switch itself inside the Unify controller. Are you sure you want to upgrade the Unify Switch 24 from version 4.3 to version 5.76? So you could see it's several revisions behind. So we are definitely going to go ahead and say confirm. The status change to downloading. We'll come back once this update has been completed and go from there. Okay, we're back and you can see that the Unify Switch 24 now has a connected status. It's been up for about two minutes and 24 seconds. We're gonna go ahead and click on it. And we're just gonna take a quick look. It's nothing different than pretty much any of the other Unify switches. However, we'll just go through what you're looking at here. You can see the port status up here. We have the uplink on port one, which is the port I'm plugged into the studio switch. You can see if it's green, it's gigabit. If it's orange or amber, it's 100 or 10 megabits per second. If it's gray, it's disabled. And if it's black, it's disconnected. Okay, looking at the overview, it shows you the MAC address, the model number, the version of the firmware the switch is currently running, and then the IP address, no temperature sensor, uh, memory usage is at 24%, and then you have your load average. You have your uplink and downlink status here. We can expand that to see that information. 
If we click on the Clients tab, you can see the it's picking up some of the clients from the Studio Switch. Let's click on the Ports tab, and here you can see you can name the ports. This is the same, it's pretty much the same as any other Unify switch. Let's click on the config wheel. Under general, we can use the site settings for the screen. We can turn it on or turn it off. We can adjust the screen brightness, the timeout. Under services, again, all of the same features you normally see. Under network, here's where you can set a static IP address, but for now I'm going to leave it to DHCP like I spoke about earlier. Once I get it set up in my home, then I will come back to this area here under network and give it a static IP. So in any event, guys, that's it. Just a quick video. I know nothing special about the switch. I just figured since I'm going to be configuring, I might as well do a quick video on it. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Be sure to check out some of the other videos that I have listed here up above. Please remember to subscribe, like, and share this video. And I want to thank you, as I do in every video, for using my Amazon affiliate links. I know they don't change your price, but they do help out the channel. My name is Tony with Quick Tech Solutions. As always, please stay safe. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. And as always, I'd like to thank our Patreon supporters. And if you would like to help support the channel, there's links to the Patreon page and PayPal down in the video description.